Hi, today we're creating a solution to this challenge I recently launched on Twitter. That is, get this loader using a single HTML element, no JS, no SVG, no images in general, and keep it all under 15 declarations in the compiled code, including the layout and predefined CSS. Okay, enough talk, let's get to coding. We already have that one element and we're going to maximize the CSS because we won't be writing anything else. First step, create a square. Now we do that by setting a padding on our element and making sure the width and height are zeroed. The height is zero by default if we don't have any content as it is the case here and the width we're going to have to set that explicitly. Now the padding, let's say something like 5ms, we can tweak this later and on our load element, we're going to set that and we're going to set the background because otherwise the background is transparent and we don't see anything. Okay, uh, and as I said before, zero the width. Okay, having done this, next step is set a clip path value. Uh, so clip path, and we're going to use an inset function. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this uh, takes a list of value, a list of values that is kind of like the margin or the padding list of values. So we have top, right, bottom, left in the four value case. And as you can see, these are the offsets from the edges of the border box by default to the edges of the rectangle that uh, we want to stay visible. So everything that's grayed out there of our element, that doesn't stay visible. And everything that's in the middle, that stays visible, okay? So if we have three values, then that's uh, top, lateral, and bottom, okay? So here we're going to have zero for top, zero for right, 50% for bottom, 50% for left. And we also have the option to round the corners of this rectangle inside. And any value that's um, a border radius value is valid there. And my first thought was to use a percentage value. However, that's inconsistent across browsers and I'm going to link to the thread discussing this. Okay, so take away, we're not uh, using percentages. Uh, so we're going to get the rounding as a fraction of that padding. So um, something like that. And now we're going to take this and we're going to animate it. So we're going to have keyframes uh, morph to a clip path value. And here we're going to have a zero for top, zero for laterals, 80% for bottom. Now here we're going to have an animation and let's set an animation duration here. Let's say 0.5 seconds for now, 0.5 seconds for now. Uh, so um, animation, we're going to have morph that animation duration, um, make it ease in out, uh, infinite, alternate, okay? Okay, next step, we're going to set a second animation. So this is going to be a flipping animation. So flip, uh, that one is going to be 50% right there. And we're going to have something totally different here. So we're going to have uh, scale uh, minus one along the X axis, along the horizontal axis. So basically flip horizontally and one along the vertical axis. So no change vertically. Okay, so we're going to have the second uh, animation. Um, flip twice the animation duration um, steps so uh, it changes abruptly infinite let's see it okay this works now we're going to have a third set of keyframes here so this one is going to be a rotate one so um, two here we're going to have a rotate and here we're going to have minus one turn and of course something very similar here except we're going to have uh, rotate and we're going to have four times because we have four edges and again here four steps because uh, a square has four edges okay so we get that uh, sort of animation but we want two tiles and we want them to be delayed we want an animation delay of half the animation duration for this rotation. So to do so, uh, we're going to use the pseudo elements of this uh, load element. And we're going to take care of layout as well. So on the body, um, if you've seen my previous videos, then you know I like to do something like this. On the body and on all div elements, we set display grid. Okay, and then we get rid of that and make sure everything is placed in the middle by setting place content center on the body. 
Now, this appears to put things in the middle only horizontally, except it does vertically as well. The only problem here is that the body takes the height of its content, which is this load element. So we need to explicitly set the height of the body to the full viewport height. So something like this. Um, this gives us a scroll bar because of the margin. So let's uh, zero the margin. Okay, margin zero. And having done this, we can just uh, collapse the body because we won't be needing it anymore. Okay, so yeah, take that. And here we're going to use the pseudo elements. So before and um, after. Okay, and of course, nothing's going to show up unless we set content there. And let's align this properly. Okay, and as I said, we're going to want to have on the after an animation delay of minus four times that animation duration. So that's basically half of that. Okay, but we want those two to overlap. So we want them to be in the same cell at the intersection between the first row and first column. So grid area, first row, first column. Okay, we can tweak the easing. So for example, we can take uh, something like this. So just uh, copy paste that instead of easing out. Okay, and we can uh, tweak this animation duration, for example. So it's going to look something like this. And um, fix that background right there. And that's pretty much it. I'll stop here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description. Or you can get me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, the links are going to be in the description. Or you can at least share this to show the role what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time.